Uh, Chairman, thank you. Just as I indicated earlier, from the point of view of the auditors, five million was what was collected as idea. Out of it, two million was used by the ministry, of which 500,000 have been refunded. So that is the position of the test. And the five million was not lodged per the report. Thank you. Chairman, the five million was not lodged into the public accounts. That is what the auditors are saying. And Chief Director is saying it's only two million. We need to reconcile this and to know what is happening now. Have you changed from not lodging the money at the appropriate accounts? Have you changed from that? Honorable yeah. Chairman, we have changed. So you now admit that it was the five million that was not deposited at the right place? Honorable Minister, I would not until we go back to the office and do some reconciliation. Um, Honorable Minister, that's the more reason why I know that you are the minister. But don't uh, allow the technical people to answer. Otherwise, they will hide behind you. Because whatever happened, you are in there. So let them answer for it. Yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, let's move to the next one, paragraph 449, um, which should I be done by ranking? It's not here, so I'll take it. Uh, that's rent arrears of NDP, UNDP flats of 4.3 million. Now, the Auditors are saying that they've noted that management did not collect rent amounting to 700,700 dollars from 39 tenants of the UNDP flats for the period ranging between 2015 and 2017. Now, management is being urged to recover the amount uh, to put a place uh, and also put in the necessary mechanism to ensure timely collection of rent. Can they update us on this? The, the dollar amount converted into city at the time resulted in a 3.4 million Ghana cities. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I would like the uh, Chief Director to speak to this. Honorable Chair, the UNDP flats were built to, to be rented out to diplomats. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. In the past year, since 2017, those flats have been occupied by uh, security operatives. We have made all efforts. We've written letters to national security. We've written to the IGP. We've written to the presidency to have them evicted so that uh, we'll be able to rehabilitate the place and then go on to take rent or re rent them out to earn some revenue for the state. Since 2017, we have done everything possible to have the illegal occupants evicted, but nothing, I mean, we have not had, we have not succeeded in doing that. What is the current situation? Are they paying it now, or is it still uh, the same? No, Chairman, it's still the same. The, the, the state of the uh, flats are even not habitable. All we want is for them to move out so that we rehabilitate the place and rent them out. The security personnel under Ministry of National Security? Honorable, we wrote to National Security 
And per their investigations, they informed us that uh, about 90 percent of the people there were not from national security, but were operatives from the Jubilee House. Yeah, police operatives from the Jubilee House who had occupied the place. The following that accommodation for security personnel are they under the care of the Ministry of Welfare and Housing? Under which I know. So, if these people are the security personnel are occupying these uh, UNDP flats. Is there any effort being made to transfer the accommodation, the flat, to the national security so that you wash your hand completely from it? Yes, we, we, are, we, have, uh, we have consultation with national security on that aspect, and they are assisting us. Because currently, if they are occupying the place, they are not paying the rents. And um, if it is a uh, duty of government to provide accommodation for these people. Then let's have a process of transferring this to the Ministry of National Security so that if there is any money to be paid to the Ministry of Western Housing, they do that and they own it. Then they, they will continue to occupy it. I think that should be the best. But let me hear Honorable Members, uh, Honorable Kofi Adams. Thank you very much, Chairman. Listening to the chief director, he talked about from 2017. Before then, what process do you as a ministry use in allocating those facilities to occupants? The facilities are expected to be rented mostly to diplomats who have been posted to this country. And so that has been the trend. So. At 2017, when this incident happened, were diplomats occupying the place or it was empty and these persons you talked about took over? Uh, by 2017, a few diplomats were there. And they exited? In fact, they, they couldn't stay with the operatives who had occupied the place, who had come to occupy the place, so they exited. Well, I. If you say these are police, for police, even if they are assigned to some agencies, they still are under a certain level of what? Control. And either the Ghana Police Service or if they are fire service people, the chief fire officer and the rest still have some control over them. And I think that there should be some more engagement on this, on this matter. There should be some more engagement. And you are losing serious revenue. Even the other occupants have to leave per your, per your statement. And so, Chairman, I think we may have to help them because it's, it's one of, control. yeah, it, it looks like it's beyond your control. So we have to use this medium to help. If national security is saying 90% of the occupants are not under their uh, legitimate control, then we have to find out further because they may not even possibly be officially assigned to even the Jubilee House and we will not know because if those assigned to the Jubilee the National Security will necessarily know about them and if they are saying 90 percent, meaning that some people may be using the usual thing that people do. They go somewhere. We are national security operatives. When they are not known from anywhere to take them, and the state will be losing so much revenue. And it doesn't help our image if diplomats have to vacate such facility because of certain things that may be happening there and they can cohabit effectively. It may not be helping our image. So we really have to do something about this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. Honorable Roxanne. 
Chairman, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Chief Director, I, I can appreciate your, your, the difficulties that you are in, but let me ask, how did they get the keys to occupy the premises in, in 2016? <laughs> um, they moved in on their own. That's why we said illegal, we described them as illegal occupants. Okay, um, but you have been able to determine that they are security operatives. I, I know that you choose your words carefully because whether they are BNI or national security proper or even police or security at the office of the president is difficult for you. And it's not for any reason why this report is called an audit. So to tidy this up, I will urge that you go back and verify their true status because they may be operative, but they have institutions that they are directly working, uh, working with where to go. So determine their status and then uh, let the committee know. They will determine whether they, uh, they can stay there gratis or their institutions who have to pay rent, that is due you from the use of that facility. Because I say this, I say this because by their conditions of service, they may be giving rent allowances and they are pocketing that and are occupying state premises for free. So if we make that determination, then we can tidy the whole arrangement up. Yeah. Yes, that would be my humble opinion yeah. on the matter. Thank you very uh, much. Chairman. Honorable. But it's surprising that these people can walk in and occupy the, the buildings on their own. Doesn't mean that I can also walk in if I have the strength to kick some people out to also go and occupy. I think that this is my link to some powers. Yes. That's what it is. They will be linked to some powers that enable them to occupy the place. So. I think that the ministry need to do more work to find out really, really who are the people occupying the place. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, uh, I must add that the ministry actually has plans to redevelop that enclave. I say this because, Honorable Chair, this uh, property that we're talking about it's in cantonments. Uh, the same area where some of the very notable uh, diplomats are living. So a very prime area. I like this close to American embassy. Yes, I, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a very prime uh, area. So it is important that uh, uh, we make uh, better use of the property. Uh, there are even some structural issues. I mean, I've had opportunity to visit the place, and <laughs> it's actually not habitable. When you see it, you see that uh, you see the iron rods and all that coming out. So we are in talks with uh, AESL advising us on uh, uh, the next possible course of action to, to 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 take on the matter. But the key thing is that we plan. We have. Uh, plans to redevelop the place and I must also add that earlier on some attempt to redevelop the place had taken place and there are some contractual issues that we have to deal with and uh, um, is, we are currently working on that so that uh, uh, if even we are not going to use it as a, uh, a place to to uh, rent out to diplomats because that idea came about because at that time there were not there were no places for diplomats but now there are a lot of places in these areas run by commercial developers so I mean based on this background we are looking at all the various options but I don't know the, the interest of the government and the group of Ghana will be taken into consideration thank you yeah so t take advantage of the renovation to 
take them, eject them from the place, yeah. and after the renovation, yeah. you take full control. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Minister, uh, still on, on this matter, um, is, is a matter of uh, to the people of this country. I know in recent times you have caused um, an investigation to be done on state properties. Um, are you able to brief the committee um, the, 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 the number, I mean, in terms of percentage uh, of such occurrence in other state properties, people who are occupying buildings that do not, um, they are not supposed to occupy. I know that you have, you have started an investigation, if you have a fair idea, so that we know that it's not just limited to cantonment, but probably maybe it's on a large scale. Uh, Honorable member, you are right. Uh, I had occasion to set up a committee to look into audit and inventory, provide inventory of these government bungalows. And last week, I received an inception report, uh, a final report. We are currently uh, studying it. Um, it may be premature for me to comment on it in the public. But at the right time, I'll be able to come back to the committee to be with the committee. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Let's go to paragraph 452 and to be done by Honorable Apak. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And let me indicate that uh, the chief director is uh, my uncle from Kanjar Jeningsa. It's not conflict of interest. I also ask the questions. He is a Busa man. I'm a Busa man. We do it a Busa way. And yesterday, my chief, chief Macarius. In any case, the issue at hand has to do with rent control. The auditors indicate that there was a single source procurement that was done without approval. According to the report, during the year 2017, I mean, according to management's response, it was in 2017 that the single source contract was awarded. They indicate that it didn't go through competitive procurement. And they have recommended that the officer involved be sanctioned in accordance with Section 92.1 of the Public Procurement Act 2003, Act 663, as amended, the Federal advised management to desist from the practice. What action has been taken with regards to this query? And if I may add, the value of The contract is quoted as 276,150 Ghana cities. What action have you taken? Thank you very much, Honorable. Honorable Apak, uh, I will let the Chief Rent Officer to respond to it. Just by way of clarification, uh, this transaction didn't take place in 2017. Thing took place in 2014, 2015. Um, just a, a matter of correction. Thank you. Uh, well, then I would have to refer this to the auditors for clarification. Because I read verbatim what was indicated. If you look at paragraph 453, it says, We noted during our review that management in 2017 awarded a single source contract to Langtar Enterprises Limited. 
for the construction of a one-story district office at Jirapa without approval of the public procurement authority. So I'm not saying it. That is what is in the record. Okay. So the auditors, you may want to show that we are setting about the timelines. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the audit is in respect of 2017 and not 2014, 2015. Thank you. So I go back to my question. What action has been taken with regards to the recommendations made by the auditors to management? All right. Uh, Chief Rent Officer, you may respond. Thank you very much. Honorable Chair, the officer who supervised the process for the award of the contract has passed away. Nevertheless, the recommendation has been noted for compliance. He has passed away. Yes. So, Chairman, what else can we do about it? The auditor's recommendation is action to be taken on the officers who were involved in this one. And the officer has passed on, uh, so he's not there in person for any action to be taken against him. So that can, nothing can be done about that. Um, the second one, the second recommendation is management to desist from the practice. And I'm sure by now auditors will tell us if they have, are following that recommendation. But I look, I look at your response. You say that management will, will be directed through the ministry to the procurement authority for ratification. It's part of your recommendation, but you didn't add it. Um, okay. Yes, how do Lord. you intend doing that? I will do it, my Lord. And the thirdly, so, and thirdly the thirdly. ministry has also given approval for oh. establishment of audit committee in the department to ensure that such anomalies do not occur in future. Yes, my Lord. But, Chairman, for clarification, what is the state of the district office? Has it been built? Yes, my Lord. It's at the lentil level. And it's at the lentil level? Yes, my Lord. Yes, Chairman. What is preventing the completion of the projects? Uh, at the time of the audits, 61,000 had been paid to the contractor. Now, you, you are saying that the project is at the lengthy level. What is preventing from the completion of the project? Mr. Chair, we want to write to PPA to find out to collect the the, the abnormally done. Thereafter, we can take up from there. So it's the instruction of the Red Control Department to, to the contractor to suspend work on the project until the ratification comes from the yes, procurement authority. Yes, my Lord. And have you written the procurement authority? Not yet. What is preventing you from doing that? came out in 2019, June, and we're in 2022. We haven't written to the program authority. What is preventing you? It was an administrative oversight. And from this cannot be an administrative oversight. It, it, it's not something that, ah, how can an oversight be two, three years? Eh? No. Why? Why not that, my Lord? Chairman. This is referred to me as a chairman. I'm not Lord yet. Oh. 
Thank you. So, um, yes. Chairman, uh, I think it's a bit surprising that uh, the Minister of Works and Housing <coughs> would allow this to happen, knowing fully well the challenges that we are having in terms of public spaces. So I'm suggesting that perhaps you give a much more nuanced directive, a time frame for a report to be given to the community, I mean to the committee on the state of this uh, project. That is my humble appeal. Honorable Chairs. Chair, my, my question is twofold. First, in, uh, uh, if you are given a time frame, we should also look at if there's rev, uh, funds, because this is predicated on funds. You, you cannot do construction without funds. Probably they are having challenges already. The minister, sector said, minister said uh, they sometimes use the IGF. So it could be that as a result of funds. So please, your time. Over here, Ghana, we have money. We are sitting on money. No, please, Chairman. <laughs> chairman, no, I no, don't no, you no. know that we are sitting on chairman. The council, I don't. Chairman, but the sector minister just said that money shouldn't be a problem here. Chairman, but the sector minister just said that. <laughs> the, the, the second bit. The, <laughs> Chairman, the, the second bit goes to the auditor. I know the auditor said that uh, this audit was in respect of 2007, but then you heard the sector minister, 2017, but you heard the sector minister said this is in respect of 2014. The transaction was in 2014. What is the difference? Because, you know, the transaction occurred in 2014, and you did your audit in 2017. So it's not the same. Doing the audit in 2017 and the transaction came in 2014. The audit was conducted in 2018. That's what he said. Reported in 2019 by June. But so, Honorable Charles, I will I'll disallow that. Your oh, Chairman, but that's what he said. Honorable Yusuf. Chairman, the response that the officer passed on, if you look at the recommendation very well, we recommended to the sector minister to sanction the officers, not officer, officers. So if one is passed on, there are still some officers around. Okay? So who are those officers? And I, I'll be surprised to see only one person, you know, going through the process of awarding a contract in an organization like this. So let's get those officers who were involved in this process, and they should be punished according to the law. Yes, the member want to is saying that it cannot be only one officer involved. It could be more than one. But if it happened that it's only one officer is involved, probably you are referring to the robbers who that is what the officer is involved. But Mr. Chairman, um, I think we need to uh, get to the bottom of this. The auditor is saying that this project was started in 2017. The minister is saying it started in 2014. Um, Honorable Minister, do you have any documentation to show that it was started in 2014? Or we are going by here because we have the auditor saying 2017. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, uh, yes, we can provide documents to sh show, but I think what I said is different from what the auditor said. The auditor said that the audit is for 2017, and I said that the transaction took place earlier, which is uh, 2014. Can, the, so it's not can the, the auditors, can the, excuse me, uh, can the auditors confirm when the project was started. It's just a simple thing. 
Thank you, Chair. From the other point of view, the contract was awarded in 2017. We are, we are going by that until otherwise it's provided. We are going by what the auditors are saying. And, um, so, but, uh, Honorable Minister, what is the source of funding for this project? Honorable Minister, what is the source of funding for this project? Honorable Minister, what is the source of funding for this project? Is the minister in the room with us? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the Chair. source of funding for this project? Is the uh, budget of the Rain Control Department. It's from the GOG. All right. Yes. And uh, Honorable Chair, just uh, not to drag uh, the committee, but I have uh, the, day, the document that shows the award of contract for that project. And the date is 19. It's actually 19 April 2012. So it's, it goes uh, way, way back, but uh, I don't think that we should we should um, dwell on, on on the day. Yeah. So uh, let's have a copy of that. Uh, it should come to me uh, as the chair of the committee. No more no more discussion on this topic. No, not on this topic, and not no more question for the minister. Please. I said no more question for the minister. Honorable minister, I want to thank you for coming. You are discharged. Um, uh, Honorable Chair, let me take this opportunity to thank you and members of your esteemed committee. You are grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's have Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. Honorable Minister, kindly introduce yourself to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Lariba Zuera Abudu, Deputy Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. Thank you. Okay. I'm Ali Seidu, Head of Accounts, Minister of Gender. My name is Abdel Karim Tosa. Chief Internal Auditor, Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection. Emmanuel Osebidiakon, Chief Accountant with the Ministry. Thank you. Dr. Afisa Zakaria, Chief Director, Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. Thank you very much for coming. There are a few findings in the report of the Auditor General for 2018 about the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. Now, Honorable Deputy Minister, what is a caretaker minister? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think she's at the funeral of uh, one of our colleagues, Honorable uh, Kofiada. So she still has to just step in for her. If she finishes, she will join us. Thank you. Mm. OK. Let's leave it. Honorable members, please. Please. 
If all of us should go there, then this work will not go on. But if some can go and some of us will be working, then the work will be going. So th let's permit that. At least the deputy is here to represent the minister. All right, so we'll start with the deputy ranking member of the committee who handed paragraph 415 to 418 of the report. So, Abu, deputy minister, um, deputy ranking. Thank you very much, chairman. Um, welcome, madam deputy minister. Um, this has to do with um, failure on the part of the Ghana National Household Registry, which is within your ministry, to present six payment vouchers to the auditors, and the total of that is about two million eight hundred and sixty thousand six hundred and fifty-six. First, I want to find out from you um, why your outfit failed in providing these vouchers to the auditors. Thank you. I think I will refer to Mr. Bediaku to explain this one. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. The officer in charge at the time of the verification of the audit was on training outside the country and on his return presented same to the Auditor General and the Auditor General cleared it and issued a report to that effect, which is part of the, uh, what has been sent to the committee. Thank you. Is it the case that at your ministry you do not have systems in place in such a way that if an officer travels, um, it means that his whole, is the entire department that he works under has also traveled with the person? Is, 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 is that what you are telling the committee? Honorable Chair, that is not the case. It is just that the vouchers somehow was available, but um, upon the return of the officer in question, he had to again provide it to the Auditor General for it to be verified. Thank you. How long did this officer in question travel? I mean, how long did they spend outside the country? Honorable Chair, we have to cross-check with the timelines. Thank you. You see, I ask this because um, it's important that we take issues of audit serious in this country. You, and I know how the audit service works. They do not just end up by capturing some of these things in the audit or the audit general's report. You are offered an opportunity to even respond to some of these queries after um, uh, the, the findings are made against your um, establishment. So if you come here and come and tell us that the officer in charge had traveled, you, don't, you do not even know how long this person, uh, for me, it, it does not really sit well with me and it's not something that we should be encouraging. We are here to protect the public purse. And uh, such stories should not appear. I mean, people sit on TV, they watch us and they think that um, nothing is being done. That should not happen. Sir. What has changed in your outfit with respect to um, such practice? Please let us know. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Well noted. Thank you. Yes, so oh, I'm, I'm asking the officer in charge. What is it that has changed, especially with the um, uh, uh, issues of voucher, is he automated? Is, are you still going by a person keeping it in such a way that if the person travels, nothing happens under your watch? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I think it's um, a project, that, a well-done project that was being handled. Um, currently, everything is now put on the GIFME system, uh, which is the government official accounting software for managing it. So, at any point in time, documentation of this project now is on the system and could be assessed at any time and by anybody. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so 
Yes, I'm still going back to the issue of the gentleman or officer traveling, and for that reason, we could not get the uh, vouchers. Assuming the officer had decided not to return, what would have happened? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, fortunately for us, he returned. So uh, we had the, the vitus. It is not so, about... Yeah, we, we have taken note of that, that uh, next time, I think, and like he made mention, everything now is in the gitmic system. So uh, I pray that such abnormalities will never happen because we now have a formal way of doing things. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, you have not answered me. Mm. My question is, if he hadn't come, what would have happened? Definitely find the documents since uh, there are documentation that have been on files. Definitely we would have retrieved it. Thank you so much. And he was also working with some people. So we that's have my point. To, yeah. If there was a way to get the documents, why did you wait until he returned? Because you said that if he had not come, there would have been a way to retrieve the documents. Why did you decide to wait for him to come before? Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. Um, it's a project that had um, consultants working side by side with the government officials attached to it. At some point in time, some of the contracts of the consultant expire. So the, some of the people who could help in retrieving the documentation in the absence of the government side, I think, led to this. But immediately, um, the person in question returned. The documentation was actually, it was an oversight and it was duly provided. Thank you very much. Okay, auditors, are you able to um, confirm or otherwise the, whether you have received, received um, this vouchers uh, mr chairman we we have seen all the six vouchers and have examined them they are okay so let's move to the next one uh, which is paragraph 419 and uh, i'll ask Okay, some George. So I'm taking myself, myself. School feeding. Proceeds from sale of application forms not accounted for. Eight hundred and ninety-nine thousand. Um, application form, I believe. Application form for caterers. Yeah. So you didn't account for. 899,000. Have you accounted for it now? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. I think the auditor will respond to that effect. The auditor, okay. Thank you. Honorable Chair, we have uh, so far accounted for or retrieved 67,841 Ghana cities since uh, the issue was raised by the auditors. What happened was uh, the forms were sold by the district assemblies. And then um, not all the proceeds were returned to the ministry. Therefore, following the audit report, we wrote to the district assembly and then uh, we got a total of uh, 67,844. But that, after that, that was in, uh, uh, in the year 2020, we also wrote on the uh, 30th of November, we wrote again as a follow-up to the earlier letters we wrote that resulted in the retrieval of that amount. And then on the 14th January 2021, Another follow-up was written to the Minister for uh, Local Government, as well as for uh, to the, a letter to the Local Government Service to help us retrieve that amount. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I no response to that letter on January 2001, 2021. 
No, no, no response, please. No response. Yes. Do you have a list of all the assemblies involved? An amount expected from each of them. Do you have that list? Honorable Chair, we have it. Yes. We can finish the committee already with that? Yes, they have just... We finished part of it, but this is... Uh, we want the full list yes. okay. of the all the assembly involved. Um, local government minister will be appearing before the committee tomorrow. So we can ask him to assist in getting the money for the ministry. Uh, you see, my district is also part of it. <laughs> Katunov, if you are listening to me, Joje. Katunov, if you are listening to me, there are 12 beneficiaries. 12 beneficiaries. And then the uh, number of applications sold, 36. Unit cost, 50 Ghana cities. There's total cost of forms sold 1800 amount of sunny 1800 okay after here i'll call my mc but it this this is a good information for the committee honorable apak thank you mr chairman excuse me if i appear naive what are these forms for that you sell and have sold and can account. Yes, educators. Yes, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, the forms were sold in order to recruit new caterers onto the school, Ghana School Feeding Program. Thank you. Uh, it was sold in uh, 2017. Thank you. So these forms are part of the processes of selecting the caterers. Honorable Is it the case that there is a guarantee that when one buys a form, one will get the opportunity to become a caterer or there is no guarantee? Uh, there is no guarantee. <laughs> because uh, the forms uh, have some information details that you have to give. If you don't qualify uh, with the details that you provide, you are not going to be given uh, <laughs> the opportunity. Thank you. I am glad the minister has responded. Because you know this school feeding program is popular for both good and bad reasons. Can you educate us on the processes of selecting people to be appointed as caterers? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Uh, uh, normally, we advertise. Then the women, they buy the forms. Then they give us the, their details. And then uh, some of them, will be, you have to go through health screening to be sure that uh, you are healthy to do uh, the cooking for the students. So that's the process we go through. Well, that is uh, good to know. So it's based on competence based on a set criteria. Chairman, I'll leave it here. Thank you, Honorable Apak, and thank you, Mr. Honorable Sophia. Chairman, the minister stated that the women buy the forms. I want to find out if the school feeding is only limited to women to buy forms for cooking. Because we also have men who are chefs. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. If you uh, go into our system, you see a lot of men 
who are doing school fees. A lot of men. Hello, Yusuf. Chairman, this morning, or this afternoon, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm happy because in 2017, I asked the Minister of uh, Gender a question on this same matter. Because in my district, these forms were sold without any receipts. So you go buy the form, and nobody gives you a receipt. And that is why they are unable to account for this money, to the extent that some people even did uh, photocopies and were selling. What system have you put in place to ensure that going forward, this doesn't reoccur? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman. Now we have an electronic system where you even pay to the banks, not to the individuals again, but through the MMMDCs. So we have now put a very good system in place that uh, you can go by the form and then uh, uh, you go through the process for selection. Thank you. Deputy Minister, there was this, also, there was this policy to give um, some uh, locations to Queen Maris under the school feeding program. What is the state of it? Chairman, I'm not preview to that, actually. Preview to giving a location to Chairman, not preview to that. Thank you. All right, let's move forward. Paragraph 424, uh, unsubstantiated payments, 1.1 million. The auditors um, noted that the review of the cash bill revealed that a payment of 1.1 million on 27th March 2017 was not substantiated with payment voucher and other supporting document. Now, the auditors are saying that they are requesting for the refund of this money from management for its inability to produce document for the review. Uh, do we have the, the coordinator, the national coordinator of the school feeding program? Do we have, do you have her here? Honorable Chairman, unfortunately, she's under the weather, so she couldn't come. Yeah. So, but the internal auditor will help her. So, let's way. know the status of this uh, infraction. Honorable Chair, uh, the payment voucher has been produced, ver verified by the external auditors, and then the issue is uh, uh, resolved. Thank you. At the time of the audit, why did it produce a PV for the auditors to verify? What happened? Honorable Chair, um, there were, uh, as, um, how do you call it, streamlining, the, the then minister was streamlining the system. So she requested for a number of PVs to be brought for her to verify what was going on. So in the movement up and down, we, we realized that uh, that PV was not uh, easily located. But later on, she was able to find it, and then we presented it to the auditors. Thank you. Now, you made payment for an amount of 1.1 million to Dalex Finance Company, via check number 24292. What was that payment for? Dallas Finance Company. Did you take loan from yeah, the company and you are paying back? What is the nature of that transaction? Mr. Chair, um, the origin of that is that the ministry prior to the change of government started a process of uh, digitizing the system to acquire tablets, verifying, to help in verifying that each uh, um, people that uh, be digitized, uh, digitally verify for us to make sure that we get the accurate figure. 
of those who daily patronize this uh, social protection program. But some funds have been released to the ministry to enable the acquisition of uh, those uh, devices. But when there is a change of government, the policy did change. Therefore, the money was uh, there idle. The then national coordinator decided that no, it was an option to invest the money, uh, uh, which uh, he did. But the auditor drew his attention to the fact that you cannot use government money to buy government uh, uh, bonds. Therefore, uh, he decided to retrieve the money. So that was what uh, happened, Honorable Chair. How long was the investment with the Dallas Finance Company? Honorable Chair, I can verify. I don't have it off head. What interest amount was earned on that investment? Chair, the principal together of, with the interest as shown in the, on the bank statement, I can make it available. Let's know how, how much interest was made in that. Data yes, I, I, I will check the and then make it available. All right. Um, let's move. Once the interest hits the account of the uh, program, definitely it will be utilized for the interest of the, of, of the states. Let's Thank have you. Uh, Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Yeah. Honorable Chairman, with your permission, I want to uh, inform you that uh, the caretaker minister is in. And so, uh, you, so you know, your, I previously... Uh, your position is now being shifted. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Honorable Minister, you are welcome. All right, so let's continue. Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister, let's swear you in because definitely you'll be speaking to the issues. So, Clark. I, Cecilia Bernadapa, swear by the Almighty, swear God, by the Almighty God that, the evidence, I shall give that the evidence I shall give before this committee touching the matter in issue, touching the matter in issue shall, be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth and nothing but the, and nothing but the truth. So help, me so help me God. That is all. Thank you. Honorable <laughs> Sophia will take paragraph 428. Thank you, Chairman. Paragraph 4 to it. The infraction here is five unsupported transaction, and that is 1,368,348 um, Please, I would like to find out who is the head of the Department of Account. Is it here? The account department. Mr. Chair, please, the then head of account is on, is on pension now. Is on pension? Yes. Okay. Now, all these things disclose that management failed to substantiate five payments totaling this amount. What do you have to say about this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As at that time, the PVs were presented all right, but it was the supporting documents that were not available because it was programs that were held throughout the country. So later, the supporting documents were retrieved and attached and presented to the auditor for their verification, and it was okay. I noticed in, in your response that you have retrieved three of the supporting documents. What's the amount of the other two that is left? It was only left with the 10,000. That one to the supporting document was presented, but the person who made the payment as at that time used attendance 
she attendance register to do the payment without letting instead of using the attendance register to create a payment uh, register the person didn't do it so he just mentioned your name give you how much you have to take as your tnt and wrote on the top of the, the attendance register these people over here have given the 100 cities or 50 cities so out of that the auditors rejected it that uh, somebody could attend the program and not sign for the money so the people should have signed for the money as well aside signing for the attendance register currently we are calling all the people who attended the program to come and sign one after the other so we will soon present the a payment sheet to auditors for verification we have how, the attendance how long is this and when was this program this was done in 20 the program was done in 2018. 2018? Yes. And we are in 2022. And you are still calling the people. Are you still calling the people? And what's the response? Or is there any challenges? They are coming to sign. They are coming. So the program was held in 2018. Is that what you said? Yes. And they are still so coming. Is the, the process of getting in touch with them, some of the lines you call severally, you wouldn't get any response. What's the process of disbursing the money? Sorry. Mr. Chairman, those who attended the program at that time, there was an attendance register which all of them have signed. So the disbursement should have been that the same attendance register should have been used. When they mention your name, you come and sign a, a payment sheet as well. But they only mention the name when you come, then they give you money and you go. Instead of signing for that uh, payment sheet as well, they didn't let them sign for the payment sheet. And sign against the specific amount given to each and everyone who attended the program. That was the error in the side of the one who went to do the payment. So when do you hope that we will finish paying? Sorry. Mr. Chairman, I'm sure very soon the, the rate at which we are going, very soon we will present the payment sheet to the committee for verification. Please, can you be specific? Very soon is ambiguous. Mr. Chairman, please give us up to the end of March to complete it. Chairman. Uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, Chairman, I, I am scandalized by this information. And when young people sit in the house and watch programs like this and see senior public officers say this is demoralizing that we we'll use public funds to organize programs participants will come who we'll disperse funds in an inappropriate manner go back and correct records it's taking us four years to do that and we are still telling the public accounts committee of parliament that we are calling people on phone to come and do this how do you expect us to keep approving monies for you to, to do th things like this? It's unacceptable. And your minister that I know, I'm sure from here, she's going to take very, very serious steps with you. And nobody should hear this. I mean, you as an officer, you could even have taken steps to go around and get these people to endorse. But you sit in your office and you are telling the public accounts committee that you are calling them to come at their own convenience because the auditors couldn't sanction you. Tell me, I think you should refund so that when you get the people to come and rectify the document, then, then, then the office will pay him. How many people attended the program?
Yeah, how many people attended the program? Mr. Chairman, please, the attendance register is here, but it's not numbered. The way they run a copy of it, it is, I can't okay. see it's the not, number it's of... It's not numbered. If, if I have a little time, I can count you, the you number. Of, you, and count. all these were, nobody took time to count the number of people who attended. Now, uh, uh, the program is for media engagement, right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, are the participants only journalists? No, Mr. Chairman. And uh, everybody who attended, whether you are a journalist or not, once you attended, you are entitled to this allowance? Yes, Mr. Chairman. People, yes. were the people, were they invited? All these people who received the... Were the people invited? They were all invited. Um, so, apart from journalists, which other group of people have you invited? Other stakeholders were also invited. Like, to join. stakeholders like who? Uh, the district coordinators uh, of the uh, school feeding. Of, of, of the school feeding, yes. Okay, okay. Well, I, once they are related to the school feeding, I'm okay with that. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the officer who actually organized the program is here. So if she could shed some light, if needed. Thank you. Is she the one who made the payment? You made the payment? Yes, okay, madam. Um, have you taken the oath already? Have you been sworn in? Yes. Sir. Okay. Now tell us, why did you pay people without making them sign the, the payment sheets? Mr. Chairman, uh, please pardon me for this. Uh, the uh, uh, account, account person who was supposed to come to do the payment, that day the program was held at Elkin Hotel. There was so much traffic that we were waiting for the person to bring the money. And we were calling, calling, calling. So Honorable Minister asked me to pick a motorbike and go to the office and call the person who is supposed to come. But uh, when I went to the office, they said they have given the money to one of the... Oh, my best order. I can't spare people to bring it. So I called the person, and he said he was at the Dublin house. So I traced that there was an accident on the road. So for the accounts person to pick a motorbike, for her size and age, he said he can't sit on the motorbike. So he gave the money to me. In fact, I don't know anything about accounting. And then he insisted that I should make sure all those who will take the money should sign. I picked a, a, a paper, a print sheet. So all those who came, those who were in Accra, were given 50 CDs. And those outside Accra were given 100 CDs. And then the media men who came, also some of them got 300, 200, and then 400. That was what I did. So when I returned to the office, the accountant was angry with me that I didn't do the right thing. I, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, madam, you are sp speaking to me, so you continue. So he, he was angry. By that time, the, the people also have gone. So they were on me. I didn't know what to do. Calling them, some of them, I, I, I got them. But it's not yet complete now. Even some of them, I can't trace them. So then now, everybody is on me. So I beg you to... What, what is your name? Please, I'm Dinah Aframakakari. Dinah... Aframakakari. Uh, Aframakakari? Yeah. Okay, I've, I've seen the name here. Uh, the 10,000 was given to me. And you disperse all? Yeah. Even my money... But because you're not an accountant, <laughs> you didn't do the proper thing. Yeah. I learned a lesson. You learned a lesson? About, yeah. 
So now I have my own pad. If you can't sign, I will let you stamp a uh, complaint on it. So, so the law is that ignorance of the law is no excuse. Hey, but this one, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, um this is an instruction. Go, those people that you can get to sign the sheet, let them sign. Yeah. If you can't get some of them, it's, it's genuine. But on the, on the sheet, according to your, the person who spoke before you, says that you are getting some people who are signing. Uh, you said you provided a sheet that when they took the money, they signed on it. Let's use that sheet to support the PV. And that, we are paying the auditors to consider that one. It's a genuine mistake, and um, uh, you can see clearly from the explanation that it's something that was done unknowingly. Um, so that'll be all for you. Please, you can go back. Let's move to the next one. Honorable member uh, for Bolling. Honorable, you say we take paragraph 431. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, um, the issue there has to do with unpresented payment vouchers. But before I continue, Chairman, let me say that the Chief Director is my sister. I need to mention it here. But that has no any influence on my work, I must it. Now, the issue has to do with unpresented payment uh, vouchers to the tune of 18,218 Ghana City. What is the state of it today? Honorable uh, Chair, this transaction involves two payment vouchers. One was uh, a support from World Vision to the Department of Gender in Second D for a program. The NGO demanded the original uh, um, evidences or retirement, which was given to them. Um, following the audit report, the department wrote to World Vision for a copy for the, uh, of, of the document that uh, uh, supports the transaction. World Vision also did not uh, give us that, but they wrote a letter to acknowledge that, yes, the transactions have been uh, duly uh, retired. And then we have... Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, attach the letter from World Vision to our responses. The second one is, uh, involves an amount of 1,818 uh, 1, cities. Um, that one has not been accounted for. Consequently, the officer responsible refunded the money uh, to government checks. 
we have also attached the uh, uh, deposit slip to that effect. Thank you, Honorable Chair. So what are you saying is that the money has been retired? But let me find out from the auditors. Can you confirm this? To receive documentations to for our review. So yes, we are yet to receive documentations to support the refund of the money to Chess. So do you have the evidence here? Do you have the evidence? Yes, we, we, we do. Can you submit it to the auditors? Yes. So I think uh, at this point I will want you to take it from here. Thank you. Um, that that's, that that will be all. Now there is one issue with the social welfare school. Um, we were informed um, that when the Minister of Education appeared, the Social Welfare School, that's paragraph 223, paragraph 223, Social Welfare Girls Vocational School in Cape Coast, we are told that it's under Ministry of Gender. Honorable Minister, is that a case? Social Welfare Guys Vocational School, Cape Coast. For now, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so there is one infraction about that, so we'll have to put that before you for response. And I want Honorable Roxon to take that one, paragraph 223. Chairman, thank you very much. The inf infraction being flagged here is in respect of um, an amount of 10,334 CDs that has not been accounted for. And this was detected in 2018. Uh, what's the status now? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, unfortunately, I'm not privy to this information. What we were asked to come and report on did not include this. So, and you have to go back to check and work on it. Uh, Chairman, uh, I'll defer to you in this matter. Uh, the, the information is that because this didn't come to the attention prior, they, they, as it were, are not prepared in terms of response. So they are not able to inform the committee the status, whether or not the, the amount in question has been accounted for. So we may have to flag it and deal with it at another time. So when can you come and give us something on it, information on this infraction? Mr. Chairman, please, two weeks, because I have to get in touch with the officer. Well, uh, sorry for this call. It's a very important call that I need to take. So you are not prepared for that. Uh, what we'll ask you to do is to give us your response. Prepare a response to this and then about the status and then give it to the committee. Minister. Thank you, Honorable Chair. May I crave your indulgence to let us have your directive on paper so that we will strictly answer that. Thank you. Directive on paper. 
what no, we don't give that on paper. We give it here at the public hearing. That do this, and you have to do it. Should be okay. So then. So with so with, within within a week, you should be able to provide a response. Yes, that is fine. Okay, thank you. The other status, like you have provided in this format, provided to to the auditors and they give us a copy. So that will be all for Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. But it's one public interest question for the Minister. And Honorable Roxon. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Yes. Honorable uh, Minister, I, I, we are aware that schools reopened about a month ago. But there are news making the rounds that the caterers have not been uh, cooking for the people, especially the basic school. And so our constituents are calling and are raising issues. So once you are here, we want to hear from you regarding this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, the facts uh, can be peculiar to uh, districts exactly. So um, what I know is that government has released money, 200 million plus what we had saved from non-cooking days to make 217 million, and we've paid everybody. What happened was the first tranche of money, 100 million paid about six regions. And then we realized that if we tell them that those who have been paid should go and cook, and those who haven't been paid should wait, it will create problems. So we pushed back the date of cooking to 25th January. 2022 and that's exactly what happened so if there are areas that the caterers are not cooking we will look at them each case on its own because some caterers have voluntarily told us written to us that they are no more interested in cooking so we have that list and we have people caterers with issues between the uh, stakeholders, which we are trying to uh, resolve, region by region, district by district. Uh, when necessary, we call the MP to also give us some, uh, to shed light on that. So I will not dispute that. What the Honorable Member is saying could be true, but we can find out what is actually happening on the ground through the coordinators, the zonal coordinators. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, so... That is the final one. I want to thank you, Honorable Minister, and then your deputy who represented you earlier on, and the Chief Director, Dr. Fisa, and all other directors and the staff who came. You hear from the committee through the report that we also issue to the House. Thank you, Honorable Members, and thank you, most importantly, Honorable Chair. So, you are discharged. Let's have Minister of Transport. Clerk, kindly swear them in. Minister of Transport, those who will be speaking to issues to take an oath.
If you put off your phone and get up and take the lift to the hood, you have a computer. I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 swear by the Almighty God, swear by the Almighty God, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, touching the matter in issue, touching the matter in issue, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. Please, please. Honorable Minister, kindly introduce yourselves and your team to the committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, on my left is the Acting Chief Director of the Ministry, of the ministry Mrs. Mabel Sego. On my right is the Chief Executive of DVLA, Mr. Kosi Ajimambuzia. And on the stream right is Mr. Asarinyako, the accountant of DVLA. And myself, Koku Fesim, our Minister for Transport. I have a supporting staff. My Deputy Minister is also here. I don't to support me. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. There are three infractions against your agencies under the Ministry of Transport. So the first one will be taken by Honorable Aka, paragraph 460. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's alleged that four officers of your institution were handed 11,111 to perform some tasks. The auditors recommend that these were not accounted for and that the officers should refund the monies of 4,645. Have they done so? Mr. Chair, in fact, when we went through our books, we realized that those officers are not officers of DVLA. And we don't make any payment to at Kofodia. So I think maybe we need to check it again and find out maybe the auditors misplaced the, the queries that they were supposed to send to it. But as far as I'm concerned, they are not part, they are not part of workers of DVLA. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that's the... Yeah, um, we've had the information that this is an oversight. So it was only captured under the Ministry of Transport uh, at DVLA, Kufodia. So the only issue that they are to respond to is act actually on the road safety, road safety commission. So, um, and that will be done by Robert Dakwa, paragraph 466. Mr. please, can you give me one minute so that I can, okay. change, I can change the entity and bring in the rules of DBB? All right. Okay. So if the DVLA can go back, let's have the rules of the commission.
I, I Sivana, swear by the Almighty God, swear by by the Almighty God, God that the evidence I shall give before this committee that the evidence I shall give before this committee touching the matter in issue touching the matter in issue shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God so help me So, Honourable Thank you, Chairman. Um, so, your commission has been cited under on end salary, okay? The Auditor General's report revealed that um, two of your employees, one vacated his post and the other died, were paid on end salaries to a tune of 12,428 Ghana cities. Um, can you tell us if their names have now been deleted? when it was deleted, and the Auditor General also urged man management to prevail upon the bank to transfer the amount into the consolidated fund, while management ensures that the names are deleted. So can you just update us on that? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, at this juncture, I will invite the accountant to respond to the query. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Please, the name has been deleted, and the amount that was paid has been refunded, paid to government. Yes. The full amount has been paid? Yes, please. All right. Um, auditors, can you confirm that the full amount has been paid? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That, that will be all, Chairman. All right. Uh, thank you very much, and Honorable Minister, that will be all for you. And uh, we'll be asking one public interest question. You know, we, we, the way you respect this committee is so nice that any time, whether it's only one item affecting our agency, you, you appear. And that's a good, um, good, good note. And uh, let me use this opportunity. It's not my style to respond to issues that are raised in the media. But two days ago, when we invited the Health Minister, he did not appear. I made some directive or recommendation that will be sending to the floor for Parliament to take decision because he doesn't respect the committee like some of you do. He doesn't come to the committee. He was on joy saying that there is nothing before the committee that warrant his appearance. I don't, yes, I don't think that he is right in doing that. To the extent of mentioning that COVID report, we're not considering COVID report. COVID didn't come to Ghana in 2018. We are considering 2018 report, so there is no way that COVID issue will come here. The COVID issue started in 2020. So the Honorable Minister to do the right thing. We will recommend to the House that he doesn't take the work of the Public Accounts Committee serious. That's what we do. Some of you respect the committee and it's, it's a plus for you. I want to thank you for that. Uh, Honorable Dr. Kisi, your public interest question. Yes, uh, I'm very happy that road safety is here. Um, and I'm also very happy that I think now from in Sawam to Apeja, it's dual courage to an extent. But my concern, part of it is still, you know, single. And there are no road signs and I'll plead with you that we do something about it before we hit a disaster. Because as you travel, it becomes single lane again. And we haven't done anything. In fact, people are worried uh, about that. So I'll plead with you to pay particular attention. And then coming back to my own small constituency, Anya Sotum, uh, we've had a few accidents related to bad traffic lights and road signs, especially the speeding limits. So I'll plead with you, and for other people in such situations, uh, the road signs are very, very important. We are losing lives on, on our roads unnecessarily. 
and uh, out give you also the opportunity to maybe educate the public in terms of some of the few things you are doing this year to help us reduce the loss of lives on our roads. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc. I think that this matter is a major concern to everybody in this country. I will not sit here and deny that all is good. But in terms of the road signs and the road ramps, they are all road furniture. And I think that it's our responsibility to speak with the Minister of Roads and Highways where some of these concerns are being raised because they are responsible for our roads. And we work together with them in terms of education. And once we detect some of these defects, it's our responsibility to remind them and also to impress upon them to do so. I think it's basically it's, we will keep on reminding them and talking to them that some of these... Honorable Minister, it's difficult to hear you. So what I'm can, saying, if we can draw the mic to you a bit closer. What I'm saying is that these concerns that he has raised are all under the mandate of Ministry for Roads and Highways because they are responsible for the road furniture. The road safety is here, but our responsibility is to educate. But that's not to say that your concerns are not germane. I think they are very important issues that we need to consider because the situation on our roads are not quite about. And I will not sit here and pretend that there are issues that we need to deal with it. But we will then duly draw the attention of the Ministry of Roads and Highways to it that some of this road furniture situation that they provide, they should speed it down. At least it will save some of the lives. That are but the road that we are talking about, the Nsawam Road, we, I don't know, we have in our system what we call 2 plus 1. It's a way of trying to limit travelers by speeding. That we do do a college, that we do single road, so that when they are aware, that wherever they are entering is a single road, they, they, they come down in terms of speed and other things. So we look at it once again. If we think that the 2 plus 1 within that range is not something which is working, they, are, they will need to realign and something that you, you, you will take a critical look at. It. Thank you very much. But in terms of education, here we are. I think on record, the, the figures are there that this is the time road safety is doing more education than any other time now. But that's not to say that we cannot improve upon it. We will. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And uh, that will be all for you. Uh, you hear from the committee through the report that will be presenting to the plenary. Thank you very much for coming. Honorable members, we'll take a break for one hour. We'll come back and continue. Um, the sitting of the committee is suspended for one hour. Thank you very much.